In this episode, we're going to talk about setting the compressor on the Rodecaster Pro 2. All right, first, why do you want to use a compressor? That is the first question we need to answer. And the answer is, is that you use a compressor to help even out people's voices. And oftentimes what that allows you to do is boost up their levels just a little bit. So you can get good, consistent, loud audio. And that's the main reason that we're doing this. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about how to set these. The first thing I would recommend is actually coming into the settings. Let's go to outputs, go to processing. And if you have the master compeller turned on, I would actually turn this off while you're setting the individual compressors for each person on the Rodecaster. And you can come back and turn this on once you have it set on. The compre master compeller, the idea, that's also a compressor. The idea with that is when two or more people talk at the same time, that can help manage those levels. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off by just tapping right there. So now you can see it's deactivated. We'll come back here. Some of you are going to say, Curtis, just give me the settings. I don't want to learn how this works. Just give me the settings and I will go and set it up. Okay. Um, I don't think that's a really great way to do it, but <laughs> if you're insistent, I will give you those and then you can sign off and be done. Threshold, set it to about minus 10. Ratio, 2.5 to 1. Attack, 0 0.10 milliseconds. Release, 200 milliseconds. Start with the gain at zero. Then we're going to go ahead and have our person talk. In this case, Emma's going to talk to us. While she does that, I'm going to adjust the threshold until we start to see the compressor doing just a little bit of gain reduction. That'll be a little red meter that comes down from the top here. Here we go. Uh, something interesting that I have noticed over the past about five years since I started driving is the intellectual game that is piloting a vehicle. I mean, I've done cars, I've done boats, and I'm assuming that something similar could be said for airplanes. Okay, so you can see there, I adjusted the, the threshold down until it was just tickling that red a little bit. We don't want to be laying really heavily into the compressor, just enough to handle uh, at the start of the sentences, maybe the laughs, things like that. They get especially loud and just bring those down. Once you've done that, you can have your person talk again and we can adjust the gain up. So what we're doing is we're first pulling down those louder bits so that it kind of evens things out and then we can boost the overall levels using this gain. So Emma, if you want to go ahead and talk to us again. And what I mean by intellectual game is the self-assuredness of character that you have to have to make decisions in high-stress situations. So, you know, dangerous roads in your car or busy waterways on your boat, stuff like that. Okay, so you can see we just brought the gain up here. So we watch the meter here on the right and we're just bringing it up so it's in the yellow range and good to go. So if you're just a, a setting kind of person, you don't want to understand how this works, Thanks for coming by. There are your settings. Best of luck to you. Okay. Now that they're gone, let's talk about how this really works. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and first set the gain back down to zero. Let's talk through what these settings do, first of all, and then I'll show you how I would normally go about setting them. First of all, the threshold. What the threshold does is it actually tells the compressor uh, when, the, when the level meters are jumping around, when the level gets to that threshold, whatever you set it at here, and it starts at zero at the top, and then whatever you set it to, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper into it. So you can see here, the threshold is basically where that line starts to curve. That's when the, th the compressor starts to kick in. That's when it starts to actually pull the levels down, okay? So what I would normally do is we would start it, we can just leave it at zero at the start. And then once we get our other settings set, we'll have Emma start talking and we'll actually pull that threshold down to get it set so it's starting to do some compression, okay? Ratio. In the case of the Rodecaster Pro 2, you can set this as low as 1.5 to 1 and as high as 4.5 to 1. Normally, I'd recommend staying somewhere in about the 2.5 to 1 range. And what this setting does is this defines how much compression the compressor does when the audio does get above that threshold, okay? So if you have, if the audio level, the meter jumps up above the threshold, say it goes two and a half dB over the threshold, what a 2.5 to one ratio does is it takes that 2.5 dB that goes over the threshold and kind of basically squashes it down so it's only one dB above the threshold. 
or if we set it to 4.5 to 1, if the audio went 4.5 dB over that threshold, it would squash it down to just 1 dB. So you can see a 4.5 to 1 ratio is going to be doing more compression than a 2.5. So 2.5 is good. The idea here and my philosophy with compression for dialogue or spoken word audio, you want it to be fairly transparent. You don't want to make it sound obvious that you're doing compression. And so a 2.5 is a, probably a good place to start. Next up, we have attack. You'll notice here I can switch to the different settings by pressing on this knob here. I can also, of course, tap on the screen if I want to do that. The attack. Once the audio exceeds the threshold, once it gets louder than or the meter goes above that threshold, attack is, in essence, how long it takes before the compressor applies that full ratio. In essence, it's how long it takes for the compressor to kick in. And, and do its compression at what, you know, at what you've just defined here. So and a, a very fast attack will act very quickly. This is a fast attack. A much longer attack, in this case, 10 milliseconds, it'll actually wait a while, or it will take it longer, technically, it will take it longer to get to this 2.5 to 1 compression ratio, okay? Typically for dialogue, I, you know, again, I'm just really trying to manage the, the, the rare bits that get above our threshold that kind of stick out a little bit. I just want to manage those. So I will typically use a very fast attack. I don't want anything to come to clip. And what, what I mean by that is if these meters hit zero dB, the top, um, the highest they can go, you'll actually get distorted audio. And so I want this to act very quickly so that we don't find ourselves in that situation generally. All right, next for release. Once the audio dips back down below the threshold, this is how long the compressor continues to compress before it kind of before it lets go and stops compressing, all right? And this can range anywhere on the Rodecaster Pro from five milliseconds up to 200 milliseconds. And typically for dialogue, what, what, what I find is, and we'll demonstrate this a little later, but if you go with a pretty fast release, like, you know, here maybe uh, eight milliseconds, it's gonna, it has a potential to sound kind of pumpy and, and it'll be very obvious that you're compressing It'll kind of have this woo, 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 woo kind of effect. It'll it'll be really, it's not a great sound. <laughs> You'll see it a little later on. Honestly, I would generally start somewhere around 200 milliseconds. And you can tighten it up, make, maybe make it a little bit shorter if it's still sounding good. But you're going to use your ears to dial that in and get the sound that you want. All right, the final setting is gain. This is actually often called makeup gain on other compressors. And the idea here is that after the compressor does its job, you can actually boost the overall levels, and that's what gain allows you to do. So the, the, the kind of the philosophy here with a compressor is you're pulling down those loudest bits and making things more even, and then once you've done that, that gives you a little bit of room to boost the overall levels up, and that's what gain does here. So I leave that as my last setting here to set, just like we, do, we demonstrated earlier. So let's go ahead and do this. Emma's going to talk to us for a while, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust these settings a little bit, and then we'll come back and talk about what I did and how it worked. So I think overall, one of my uh, favorite or most uh, important draws to driving and piloting is this intellectual game and knowing to coming to know myself and also trust my own judgment in situations that I might not have before. Um, it's not an experience that you can find or that I have found that I can find in many other things. So yes, I'm a car girl, I'm a boat girl, <laughs> that's just kind of how it goes. Um, and I'm curious also to try flying sooner or later. Curious to see, that's probably <laughs> one of the most dangerous ones of the three I've named. Uh, so yeah, I want to test myself a little more, see if I can keep my wits about me that long. I'm trying to come up with more ideas here. <laughs> I can totally see... Um, why people get really into driving even more so than I do. Driving on the track, driving rally, all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how, you know, how we worked on things there. So I think really once you have the, the ratio attack and release uh, dialed into what we have here, and then you start with the gain at zero, the first thing I do is I take that threshold and I move it down until... As she's talking, we're sort of just tickling that compressor. You can see it doing a, just a tiny bit of gain reduction. That's generally how I approach it. So that's where we ended up at minus 12. I, I boosted the ratio up just so you could hear what it sounds like to do more aggressive compression. And I really, it, I, I actually 
did that. Plus, I dropped the the, the threshold to a much um, lower level. I think we dropped down into minus 30s, maybe. I, I didn't even check the number. I was using my ears to hear what it sounded like. But that sounded really, really extreme and really unpleasant um, and kind of stuffy, like someone was talking into a pillow. Not a great sound. So just wanted to illustrate what that... The, sounds like and also it can be a valid technique to do that like it's like really dial it in heavy and then back off until it starts to sound more normal again like a little bit more transparent so still doing a little bit of compression but not sound not sounding like they're talking into a pillow so again almost always i'm going to leave that ratio somewhere around 2.5 maybe three and those attack and release i would again i would recommend people start there and for more advanced, maybe master class in compression, we can talk about tuning those a little bit more. But once we have that set, once I had my threshold where I wanted it, then I came here and boosted the gain a little bit. So after it's doing that compression, then we apply a little bit of a boost with that gain setting to get it into a good spot. So let's go back and do it again. I want to really compress hard this next time, like completely unreasonable settings so that you can hear what it sounds like and how you don't want to set a compressor. So let's try that. One of my all-time favorite stretches of Road to Drive, actually, is one that I definitely grew up driving on. I uh, have been on it many, many times, in the thousands, I'm sure. Um, it's very a very curvy part of highway, and so it's, it's banked really well also, props to the engineers. Um, so you can practice going at reasonable speeds, yes. Um, practice going into and out of curves and into consecutive curves. Not quite hairpins, but just enough for you to hit the apex and at a properly slow velocity and then speed back up coming out of it. And then it opens up into these big straightaways. There's some hill climbing. It's an awesome stretch. Uh, I usually do it in my little SUV. Looking forward to doing it in future sports cars, maybe or whatever I may end up driving. Uh, funnily enough, one of my favorite places to drive boats is also very curvy. Those are definitely hairpin turns, long stretches of water, big canyon walls, blind corners. It's awesome. Okay. Thank you, Emma, for that. So I just wanted to run through really quickly what we did here just to, to illustrate a few things. First, we went really crazy with the threshold and dropped it way down and really made it so that every single word that Emma spoke got exceeded the threshold. And so it was constantly hitting the compressor and, and compressing her voice. We also bumped the ratio up. So it was every time that her voice exceeded the compressor threshold, um, it was compressing even more. It was doing more squishing, if you will. We also changed the release. So we made a much faster release and you can hear it. It almost kind of made a pumping sound to it. So again, something that you want to avoid. And again, you should, you, you know, I think it's, it's fine to do that while you're setting things up just to hear what it sounds like and then back way off so that it has a much better sound to it. So overall, there is a look at how you can set up the compressor on the Roadcaster Pro 2. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.